All right, here we are. We did the Bronson Caves. We did the Hollywood sign. We went and checked out all of Griffith Park. Now we're at the most beautiful building, the Griffith Observatory. I brought along a good friend of mine, Juan. How you doing, Juan? Hey, Dan. Yeah. Good to see you again. You too. Juan's a great uh, person in Los Angeles because he knows tons about the observatory. Juan, what can you tell us a little bit about the observatory? So it's the not the only public astronomy center in the world, but it is the only publicly funded public astronomy center. So LA tax dollars pay for people to be able to come up here and look at cool, cool stuff through our telescopes. Wow, well thank you, uh, Los so, Angeles. Yeah, I uh, mean, and it's a very LA place. If we look at the Astronomers Monument, which recognizes six famous astronomers and their contributions, the artist who did these uh, this monument also did the Oscars, which is why they look a little familiar. Wow, that's yeah. cool. That's very Hollywood. I like that. Yeah, they do kind of look like the Oscars. <laughs> so, Juan, well, tell us a little bit about the building. Obviously, the building is very beautiful. It's been here for, what, uh, 100, 100 years? How old is the building? So, the building has been here open since 1937, although they began construction three years earlier, in 1934. Great. Uh, it's a wonderful, beautiful building. It's a lovely building. We've got the three domes over that. On that side, we've got our Zeiss dome, and that's where uh, they have the Zeiss telescope, which is the oldest publicly open telescope in the world. So every time you look through it, you're breaking the record for most amount of people who have looked through a telescope. Wow. wow. Of course, it's immediately broken by the person right behind you. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true. That's true. In the no. middle, they've got uh, the planetarium dome, which is where we've got our live projected shows. It looks like you're flying through space and over there is the celostat which is a fancy word for a solar telescope you get to see the sun oh real? so i can see the sun inside that you can see the live image of the sun inside that dome there's a, a picture where you can see sunspots prominences all sorts of solar activity wow that's amazing so you can come up here to the observatory you can look at planets through the zeiss telescope you can look at the planetarium and watch a really cool show and then you can also look at the sun and the celostat Juan, thanks a lot. Why don't you go ahead and come with me and show me around? Cool, sounds fun. Let's do this. Alrighty, so here we go. Unfortunately, Juan had some unexpected something come up, so he's not going to be joining us, but I'll do my best to walk you through the museum here. Upon entering the museum, if you make a left, you'll enter this area called the Hall of the Eye. The Hall of the Eye has got all these cool historical artifacts and and different displays explaining planets, other observatories, and things like that. As you can see, it's quite busy here, so expect uh, large crowds here at the observatory any time of the day. And um, yeah, just kind of take in all this area. There's a lot of informational, educational material. Now, as you see, I'm walking up to this cage over here. This here is the Tesla coil. This is pretty cool. Um, they're going to go ahead and talk about AAC current and how, what it is, what exactly the Tesla coil is, and uh, what he did. Uh, as you can see, the museum guide over there, her name is Marcy. She's very knowledgeable and she gives a great tour. They're going to go ahead and turn it on in two, one. Yeah, electricity, baby. All right, so. You know, if you want to go ahead and make sure that you don't miss this exhibit, when you walk in, just ask any one of the museum guides and they'll tell you the time when the Tesla coil is going to be turned on. So well, that's pretty cool. If you come here to the observatory, you might as well find out more about Nikola Tesla and how great of a scientist he was. You're doing a great job, Marcy. Thanks for all the information. Okay. So... Once we've taken in all that we can over here at the Tesla coil, then you gotta walk back. One of the things about the Tesla coil is people just kinda line up in front of it, so you gotta slowly weave and maneuver your way through. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, thank you, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, thank you. Aha, and there we are, into an opening. Now this is the front foyer, if you will, of the Griffith Observatory and this was made most famous right here this exact spot here is where La La Land Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone kind of fell in love with each other
All right, here we go. See this little hole that everybody's looking at? Well, this is called the focal pendulum. And well, I'm not gonna begin to explain what it does, because I really don't know. And I don't want to confuse anybody here, but if you're here, be sure to ask one of the museum guides. Check out this beautiful mural. Wow. Look at all the detail on that sucker. This was done by artist Hugo Balin. And I definitely recommend when you walk in to look up in the air, take some time, and look at this beautiful artwork. Ah, now it's time to pay homage to the man. Griffith J. Griffith. The guy who donated all the money for the observatory and Griffith Park. Dude, you're a legend. He said, if all mankind could look through the telescope, it would change the world. So, if you come to the observatory, please carry out one of Griffith's wishes and go to the roof and look through the telescope. Another friendly employee here at the observatory? Let's see what this little area is. This is the Samuel Ocean Planetarium, and the shows here are awesome. And I definitely recommend you checking out a show. Maybe check out Centered in the Universe, or Water is Life. Okay, so going down these stairs is a whole nother two levels to the observatory that were restored and made in 2006. So check it out. Right here is called the Center of Gravity Desk, and there's another friendly employee here at the observatory. The workers here are just great. They're brilliant, they're friendly, they're helpful. Can't say enough about the staff here. That's pretty cool. A bunch of stars, you can get your name on the wall if you donate some money. And look at this exhibit. This is called the Cosmic Connection. The Cosmic Connection is well, it's like 2,000 pieces of jewelry, and it represents the ribbon of time. It was donated by longtime Friends of the Observatory board member, Kara Knack, and she owned all of it, collected it for over 25 years, and generously contributed it to it to the form of the timeline here at the observatory. Man, wow, this is pretty cool. This little area down here, it's called the edge of space and I'm gonna go ahead and ask one of the guides here if they have a meteorite I heard they have something special behind the desk it's here at the Griffith Observatory hey how you doing I'm travel man Dan I travel man Dan I'm Gio Gio Good nice to, to meet you you too you too look at all these cool rocks we got yeah here. what do you got back there I, I heard that you guys had some kind of meteorite is this true we do we actually do no, this is this is actually a volcanic rock, but it's still pretty cool to look at. Oh. Like, this is the wonder that we have. Let me see this. This is from actual outer space. This is from outer space? Absolutely. Oh, wow, this is heavy. Yeah. Wow, how much does this weigh? Oh, about 10 pounds. 10 That's a lot for something in your hand, though. Yeah. It came from the Behringer Crater. It's actually in Arizona. Created this big old crater, that picture that you see over there. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. What's a piece of it? Um, wow. And it basically created that big crater. And what you're holding also in your hand is a shooting star. <laughs> a shooting star. Whenever you see those streaks of light across the sky, you're just holding nothing. It's nothing more than just a little piece of rock. When you wish upon a star. <clears throat> Alright, sorry you about that. Wish for you didn't know I was a singer, but listen, this is great. This is from outer space. I'm, I, I have a piece. How old is this? Oh, it's billions of years old. Older than our Earth. It's probably the oldest thing you'll ever hold. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, Gio, thank you for showing me the meteorite, the volcanic rock. Here is your, uh, your rocks back. Thank you very much, sir. You have a nice day. Good luck on your travels, travel. Thank you. This area of the observatory is really cool. This is really an interactive area. And if you see where I'm standing, see a little square cut out on the ground? That is actually a scale. So yeah, you can come down here and weigh yourself on all the planets and the moon. So that's really fun. Check this out. It's a cool interactive Jupiter thing. And then over here, which is really cool here in California, you have a seismograph. And if you see, you stand on the same thing that you would like you were weighing yourself. And if you jump up and down, 
you can go ahead and register how much of an earthquake you would cause if you were jumping up in the air. That's pretty cool. Wow, well, now I'm down here in this really cool part of the observatory with a new museum guide, Kalpana. Hi, I'm Travel Man Dan. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So Kalpana, I'm looking around, I see planets, I see uh, sculptures, I see all this kind of stuff. What exactly is this and what are, we, what, are, what are we doing down here? Okay, so the biggest feature in the depths of space is our big picture back here. It is the largest astronomical image in the world. Wow. We actually have it here at the Griffith Observatory. So it has to do with Mr. Albert Einstein over there. He's wondering if you ever go outside and you hold your finger up just about a foot away from your face up to the sky, how much of the sky would you need to cover? And the answer to that is the big picture back here on the wall. So from wall to wall and ceiling to floor, there are two million objects in this image. Wow. Half of which are stars in their own Milky Way. The other one million objects are distant galaxies out there. So all two million little dots that you see here on this wall fit behind just one finger's worth of sky. So it's here to give you perspective and allow us to ponder the vastness of the universe. That is, wow, I, 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 yeah, that is quite mind-blowing. I really don't know what to say. I guess, um, how do I get to the Moise Isley Cantina on Tatooine? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's, a, that's a big picture, all right. Well, thank you so much, Kalpana. I appreciate it. Good luck on yeah. your travels. Thank you. And now uh, let's go take a look over here on Einstein, what he's looking at. Ah, the moon. The freaking moon. Our moon. How sweet is this? Check this out. They got a cool little display. Don't forget, you can weigh yourself on the moon, too. But they also have the little piece of the actual moon. I'm not sure who brought it back, but it's right there in that little glass cage. That's pretty cool. Check it out. That's it. <laughs> Just kidding, don't do that. <laughs> what, a fun, what a fun staff here. How you doing? Trail Band Dan. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you having a good time? Having a great time, actually. All right, good, good. Um, How are you? Are you having a good time? I'm loving it. I love this place. It's a really beautiful place. Um, thanks for letting us stop by. You're welcome. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah, see ya. Well, that's going to do it today. So if you're ever in Los Angeles, make sure you come and check out Griffith Park, Griffith Observatory, and all the great things within the park. I'm Travel Man Dan, and remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.